everybody and welcome to Pleasant View Gardens in Loudoun, New Hampshire. My name is Jessica Tatro and today we're going to walk you through our Saver Gardens and our lifestyle areas that we have in the gardens here. We did a video earlier this summer showing you some of the plant material that we have in there. And today we are at October 1st, we're at the end of our season and I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to harvest the last of your herb garden so that you can take it inside and be able to enjoy it all season long. Hopefully you've had some um, stuff planted out in your garden or in window boxes or little pots in your kitchen wherever you have them and you've been enjoying the harvest all season but sometimes when we get to the end of the season we want to make sure that we harvest every little last bit that we have so that we can enjoy it and we're not wasting anything. So we're going to give you a few tips on that. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can process and preserve your herbs for use throughout the season. Um, some of the main ways are air drying, oven drying, freezing, and then using a dehydrator. So I'll go over all of those um, in just a second. But one of the main things to keep in mind when you're doing these herbs is whether this is a fleshy herb, which means it has a lot of moisture content in it, or it's a drier herb. And the reason for that is you're gonna want to process them in different ways so that they don't mold or go bad on you. So your drier herbs, um, things like rosemary, thyme, sage, work really well for air drying because they do have that lower moisture content in them. One of the easiest and cheapest ways to do this is just simply air drying. So you're gonna wanna cut about um, five to six sprigs tie the end with either a rubber band or some twine, put it inside a paper sack, and then go ahead and put some air holes in there so you get good ventilation through the bag, and then hang it in a cool, dark location. Generally after about a week, they are dry. You'll know if you feel them and they're crumbly that it's ready to go. But you don't wanna do that with some of your higher moisture content herbs. And then once you're done, it is best to go ahead and if you can keep them on the stalk, it's a lot easier to um, keep the flavor on them and preserve them that way. And then when you're ready to use, go ahead and crumble them up. Okay, so we just covered air drying on herbs. The one thing I did forget to mention is that if you do have any yellow leaves or diseased leaves on those, go ahead and remove those first because you definitely don't want to eat those. They really have some bad flavor. So make sure you're just harvesting your healthy growth. But over here, we're gonna talk about the second method, which is oven drying. Again, this is something that you can do easily at home. Most everybody has an oven. You don't have to invest in any tools. But one thing to keep in mind is when you're oven drying, you can have a tendency, even at the lowest setting, to start to cook your herbs, which will remove some of those essential oils so you won't have as rich of a flavor as you would if you had preserved it a different way. But if you've got plenty of harvest in your garden, go ahead and do it. It's really easy and convenient. So up here in the front, we've got rosemary and we've got some parsley here. Just go ahead, cut them, wash them, pat them dry, get the excess moisture off of them, lay them in a single layer on a baking sheet, and then go ahead and stick it in the oven and put it at your lowest setting. Um, typically, you can tr get down about 170 to 180 on most ovens but get it to the lowest setting that you can. And then go ahead and put them in the oven. Uh, generally ranges anywhere from one to four hours, depending on the moisture content of the herb that you are processing. But as soon as they're papery and crumbly, you've processed them far enough, go ahead, take them out, and then store them in an airtight container. Um, I just tried to buy some more mason jars to do this at home so I could store in my pantry, but you guys have been growing a lot and there's a run on canning jars, so I'll have to try to find a different container for that. But go ahead and put them into your spice jars or whatever you can that's an airtight container and then save them for um, the season. The other method that you can do, which is really easy at home, is freezing herbs. And I hadn't even thought of this, but I was doing a little bit of research the other day and I'm like, wow, this is really easy. You do have to have some space in your freezer though. Um, it starts out the same way like you are going to do for um, processing in the oven. You go ahead, harvest the herbs, get them washed, make sure you're using only the clean foliage, and then strip off any of the dead. And then the easiest way is if you go ahead and process them out 
by serving size that way because when they're frozen it's really hard to separate them but you already know exactly what you're using so this is really good if you're doing soups and stews casseroles things like that where you can just plop it right in but go ahead and um, wash your leaves get them processed the uh, two different ways that you can do this so if you have something like basil which is a big leaf go ahead and cut the leaves off lay them flat on a um, like a cookie sheet or a cutting board or something where you can lay them flat go ahead put them in the freezer so you almost flash freeze them as soon as they're stiff take them out and then you can lay them in your paper bags if excuse me plastic bags or storage containers if you freeze them when they're still on the stem or when they're on top of each other the layers are going to freeze to each other and it's that same concept about trying to separate blueberries when they're frozen in the freezer all you end up with is just this mucky mess and not the exact serving size that you want so for big leafed items like basil just go ahead lay them flat flash freeze them and then lay them into your containers and then put that back into the freezer for long-term storage and then you have single serve that you can use but for other items like rosemary where you've got the smaller leaves or chives or things like that go ahead measure out the serving size that you want usually anywhere from a teaspoon to a tablespoon put them in an ice cube tray fill the ice cube tray about halfway freeze it till it's frozen and then you can go ahead and fill the remaining uh, ice cube tray up to the top get that fully frozen and then you can remove them from the trays and store them in a container and then you have instant really cool ways if you know what you're going to be making for soups and stews or you have a favorite chili recipe or something like that you can actually mix the herbs together and freeze them in the cubes together so it's one and done you make your own spice mix so there's a lot of different ways that you can do with the freezer but you do have to have some freezer space for that and then did i cover the final method is um, actually using a dehydrator and i have been looking forward to trying this for the longest time. I actually had some um, fruit this summer that I was looking to make fruit leather out of. And I tried the oven method, but it just didn't quite work for me. My oven just didn't remove all the moisture the right way. So we ended up having, as I call it, um, like apple butter. We had blueberry butter instead of fruit leather. Oh well, but at least we got to use the blueberries. But um, I'm looking forward to, to using a dehydrator and I talked with my husband and he's always asking me what do you want for your birthday because my birthday's coming up and I said can I have an early birthday present so he ordered me a dehydrator this week and it's going to be here tomorrow Woo! so we're gonna harvest some herbs today and then we'll get to use that tomorrow but the really cool thing about the dehydrator so I've been told and I'm really looking forward to this is you can lay them out and then you get the benefit of using the lower temperatures like you do for the oven, but you also get the fan and the convection to really dry them out. And so you get the speed, but you're not baking them. So you retain all of those essential oils and you get the flavor that you're looking for. So um, we will do a follow up on that and show you the process. But those are just the um, four methods that you can use for um, preserving herbs or go ahead and just make a really big batch of um, pesto or something right now, fresh. But those are the methods for um, processing and preserving them. And we'll go through the garden now, show you what we're harvesting, and then we'll show you the final result. Oh, in a lot of places, rosemary is perennial. I should probably mention that. So just a reminder out here in the garden, I know we are harvesting for preserving, but some of these herbs you can actually leave in your garden and over winter because they are perennial depending on the zone that you're in. So a few that I wanted to highlight is chives right here. Um, chives come as both common chives as well as garlic chives. And these are a perennial uh, generally through zone five. Um, there can be a little bit of discrepancy there, but at least through zone five, they've been hardy in our garden up here. And the second year they will bloom this nice purple flower. So if you're in the perennial world, you'll know them as alliums. In the culinary world, you know them as chives. But when you're harvesting these, make sure that you're only cutting back about halfway so that your plant can still continue to um, grow and overwinter for next season. A few other ones to highlight here in the front is thyme. And these are generally hardy up through zones four or five in that area. So at least hardy through New Hampshire. Here in the middle is rosemary. 
And depending on your cultivar, these can be perennial in zones um, eight and nine. Some specific ones will have gardeners reporting of hardiness into zones um, six or seven, but generally eight and nine is where you'll get this perennial. And it'll make a nice shrub and you'll get the nice bluish purple flowers on these. Um, lavenders are also hardy. And um, tarragon, which is on the back side here, French tarragon, that's hardy to about zone five. And then right here in the front, we added in some ornamental strawberries. This is an ever-blooming strawberry, um, buried treasure. There's three colors, pink, white, and red. And those have been consistently hardy for us through zone five. So just as a reminder, when you're harvesting, some of these will be perennial and come back for you next year. Depending on your locale, just um, double check the zones for that. But on any of your annual ones, your basils, um, your parsleys, things like that, we're gonna go through and do the harvesting so that we can preserve them. Sage is down there. We got the oregano, we got the parsley, we got the rosemary, carrot on that. Okay, so I have to get mint. Hey everybody, one last quick tip while I'm out here harvesting some um, peppermint. Um, this is Twist of Peppermint and looking forward to using this in teas this winter. But peppermint will spread everywhere. So if at all possible, try to keep your mints in containers. That way you keep it a little bit contained. If you do plant it in the ground, it is a perennial. It will spread and it will probably spread to places you don't even want it and it will be there for years to come. So. If you really do want to fill a space permanently, plant it in the ground, but otherwise try to keep your mints contained in containers. And this was our fun planter where we planted them in um, painted cinder blocks. You saw that little happy dance? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. It is now the next morning and I am so excited. FedEx delivered my package last night. This is the dehydrator I was talking about. Feels like Christmas morning, so we are gonna unbox it here and show you what I've got. And then we're gonna show some of the herb processing and just give you an idea of how we're going about this process. So I did a little bit of research online, looked at all the different models, and for my home project, I decided that the best model to go with, because it had some good reviews, was the Nesco Garden Master. And not that I'm endorsing one over the other, there's certainly different attributes that are good on certain models over another, but this is the one that I thought would best fit my family and our needs. So feels like Christmas, here we go, we're unboxing it. There's the top, so we've got our start and stop button over here. We've got our settings telling us what to set it at, and we can adjust our time and our temperature. Oh, here we go over here. Herbs and spices, put it at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So I guess that's the setting that we're gonna go with, guys. Here are the drying trays, so we can get them all laid out and separated. So. We will get some herbs processed and then we'll show you the trays and we'll hit start. So here we are, I'm gonna go ahead and start processing the sage. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick rinse and then we are gonna start pulling the leaves off and then make sure if you've got any leaves that are yellow or have any bit of disease on them that you just discard them. They certainly have lost their flavor and you don't want that. You're gonna to wanna to start processing the younger, more tender leaves. So we're gonna give these a quick rinse.
So we've gone through and we've washed all of our herbs and I've got the trays set up. I made sure that I did a single level on each tray so that everything will get nice, even moisture. Excuse me, we want to get the moisture out so it'll have nice, even drying. As you can see over here, there's still some herbs that we haven't been able to process and put into the trays. We had quite an herb harvest going on yesterday. The good feature about this model, which I have not purchased yet, is it is expandable. So it came with four drying trays, but you can expand it up to some models, say 12, and some of the Cadillac models say up to 30 trays. So you can really process a lot at the same time. So we laid them nice and flat on the trays, and then for this top one here where we did the time, it actually had a smaller screen that we put on there just so our herbs as they dried wouldn't be falling through. So I'm a reader, I love recipes for cooking, so it came with a little book and has lots of recipes in it, but the page I wanted to highlight here was the herb drying guide. And we went through and read it, and most of the herbs in here are gonna take about 20 to 24 hours for drying at the recommended temperature. And the time takes about one to three hours. So I decided to put the time on top so we could have that as the first one off of the um, dehydrator. So we're all set, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead, put the lid on here. We're gonna hit start. And we're gonna go temperature 90, whoops, 95. And we're going to go time, let's do three hours. Whoops, start. So we are off and running. Actually, I'm going to pause it for a second so I can finish this up. Um, the herbs that we have in here to start with, we have our um, savory sage. We have our roasting rosemary, our pasta perfect parsley, and our cooking time. And through um, Pleasant View's Savor program, We've gone through and we've put fun names to these um, herbs just to get people engaged a little bit more with it. And when you purchase them, they're going to come with these fun little tags. The benefit of these is it's going to tell you the name, give you a picture, and a recipe on the back that kind of gives you an idea of what to do with these if you're not fully into cooking or you're trying to find new recipes. Back here on the cooking time, it says thyme stuffed mushrooms. Oh my goodness, I am so looking forward to making those this weekend. Um, stuffed mushrooms is one of my husband's favorite appetizers for recipes, um, for eating. Woo and over here for the roasting rosemary, the recipe on the back is uh, rosemary roasted sweet potato. So perfect for the fall harvest season right now. Um, the other benefit for being a gardener, when you purchase these, it's actually a cool little split apart tag. So you can stick this in the garden and you know exactly what you have out there. And then you can take the recipe into the house with you. So we've got these ready to get going. I am so looking forward to being able to cook with these this weekend and in the future. Um, as I said earlier, this is my first time with a dehydrator. And if you guys have done herb drying before with a dehydrator and you have any tips or tricks, feel free to leave some comments below. We would always be Welcome to suggestions and we'll see how this all comes out. Once this batch is done, then we'll start processing our next batch. So here we go.